joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and K Street lobbyist. Look for him next year on Newsmax TV. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic delegate elect to the Virginia State House. Catch his nationally syndicated radio show, Inside Scoop, weekdays at 3 p.m. on MarkLevineTalk.com. The presidential campaign is getting personal. It started at the latest Democratic debate. Hillary Clinton said Donald Trump's comments about Muslims are being used as a recruiting tool by ISIS. Trump called those claims false and demanded an apology. He followed up with this. She's terrible. Donald Trump is on video and ISIS is using him on the video to recruit. And it turned out to be a lie. She's a liar. I know where she went. It's disgusting. I don't want to talk about it. She was going to beat Obama. I don't know who'd be worse. I don't know. How does it get worse? But she was going to beat. She was favored to win. And she got schlonged. She lost. I mean, she lost. But I watched her. Now, this isn't the first time Trump has used what could be interpreted as gendered language to criticize Clinton, but his latest remarks had a raw nerve. Plus, he criticized Hillary for being late to the debate stage after she took a bathroom break. Jack, every time we think Trump has gone too far, his ratings keep soaring. Is he the Teflon Don? Oh, I think so, and I think he'll keep going up. Of course, I don't know the Teflon Don. Eventually, they got Don, so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's the analogy that Trump wants. I think there was a better way to blast Hillary for what she said, but I think his way is effective. I do think it'll continue to drive his numbers up. There's no reason to think otherwise. I mean, her comment was silly and unfair. You could make that kind of a comment about any of America's adversaries. You could say if you criticize Vladimir Putin, he'll use that to recruit hyper-nationalists in Russia yeah, or ISIS whatever. ISIS really does build its basis off this idea that there's this worldwide attack between the West and, and Muslims. And Donald Trump feeds right into it. Her, her point was absolutely right. When you pretend that this is some worldwide conflict between America and Muslims, that helps ISIS recruit. Well, but she was absolutely mark, right. That's like they made those arguments about the Viet Cong and the Vietnam War. They said every time you kill ten, there'll be a hundred more. Should, so don't shoot any of them. You can say that about ISIS. No, With this that isn't argument, about you shooting. Can say never shoot ISIS. It's, look, ISIS builds its strength from Muslims who believe that there is some massive conflict with the West. Our greatest strength against ISIS, frankly, is the Muslim American community that is loyal and patriotic and fighting in our armed forces. To separate them is mark, really a mistake. I, I got to tell you, the greatest the greatest strength against ISIS is not the Muslim. American community. The greatest strength against uh, ISIS is the U.S. Armed Forces, which the president has not of allowed which to do American their job serve. to destroy ISIS. And Mark, Muslim Americans serve. Here's a question forces. for you, Mark. Why did the DNC schedule all these debates on the weekend? Even Clinton's rivals, Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley, think she's being protected. You know, I don't think they're all in the weekend. We saw some in the midweek. I, I watched it Saturday night. I, I enjoyed it, and then I, I watched Saturday Night Live. Uh, but I think it's fine to have them during the week or on the weekend. Different people watch at different times. I think young people may be more likely to watch uh, on the weekend. Jack, she's being protected, isn't she? Of course. Mark knows the answer to that. The Clinton would only agree to debate Sanders and O'Malley if they did it on the weekend. She they did weekday want, debates, too, She didn't too, want Jack. to debate them on. It just so happens that all of these debates are on Saturday night. Isn't that just funny? You know, she's winning all these debates, so she it may behoove her to put him on the weekdays. Well, despite his dominance showing in nearly every national poll, Trump faces a rising threat in Senator Ted Cruz. The Texas antagonist, antagonist leads in Iowa and keeps winning new support from traditional conservatives. So why are Trump and Cruz still playing softball, Jack? Well, I think the big mistake, the big mistake is Marco Rubio raised the saliency of immigration. He tried to hit Cruz on immigration, finding some petty inconsistencies and things, and that was not a good move because immigration is a bad subject for Rubio. It's why people believe he's too far to the left. So what this did is help Cruz to take some of Rubio's support, to take some of Ben Carson's support, and shoot up in the polls. It backfired on Rubio, and it helped Cruz to get a lot closer to Trump. I still don't think you're going to have a race. I stand by my prediction. I think this thing is over by the beginning of March. We'll see. Mark, the Democrats would love to run against who? Donald Trump? Oh, we'd love to run against Donald Trump. We'd love to run against Ted Cruz. We'd love to run against Ben Carson. There's a whole host of Republicans we'd love to run against. Uh, I think they're a very weak field. Meanwhile, the Washington Post pulled a cartoon that criticized Cruz for using his children in a TV ad. It depicted his five and seven-year-old daughters as monkeys. 
Is this an issue or much ado about nothing, Mark? I think it's much ado about nothing. If you look at what they're making fun of, they're specifically making fun of a Cruz parody himself where he uses his daughters as props and he makes a parody of uh, a Christmas oh, reading Mark, and he goes now, and he attacks now. liberals and even has his daughters use silly voices to attack Hillary Clinton. Right, let me ask when you, you trot this. out your children, okay. at, not only as props, but as parody props, I didn't think the cartoon Let was me that ask bad. you this. It, yeah, it's not war and peace, but let me tell you this. What if they had picked uh, Obama's daughters? What if they had done this to Here's Chelsea Clinton? What President if they done this to Chelsea has, Clinton? Has, well, Come President on Obama now. has not used his daughters in that fashion at all. He's, I don't think he's once oh, used his daughters. Well, what about Chelsea uh, Clinton? She's been on the campaign trail since she was a little, little girl. Bit, and I think Chelsea Clinton is, is a little bit more fair game, I must admit. Uh, but not that much. You know, I can't if, oh, if Let me give you an example. If Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton did a TV ad together where they attacked Donald Donald Trump together should be absolutely fair game. All right, let's move on to a new ad campaign by former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. His organization, Every Town for Gun Safety, is behind this Christmas ad that relies on stars from the National Basketball Association. It calls for an end to gun violence. I heard about a shooting involving a three-year-old girl over the summer. My daughter Riley is that age. There was a point when I felt that I was going to die. My parents used to always say a bullet doesn't have a name on it. Someone put a bullet in the back of my 14-year-old son's head. The gun should never be an option. We're Americans. We don't have to live like this. We can all make a difference. In the United States, 88 people die of gun violence every day. Now, you'll notice the ad does not use the term gun control or call out the NRA. What do you make of this approach, Jack? I I think the NBA may be heading for some boycotts. I think it's a very stupid thing for the NBA to get involved in this. I mean, even if they feel that 65% uh, or 60% of the country might somehow support this approach, you've got 35 or 40% of the country that's adamantly opposed. I think it's going to affect them in a lot of key markets. I think the, I think the NBA can expect a number of conservative boycotts next year. Hint, hint. I thought it was a very powerful advertisement. Uh, look, any American of sense opposes gun violence. No one should support gun violence, and that's exactly what the ad makes clear. We've had way too much of it this year. We've had more mass shootings than days in the year. It has to stop, and good for the NBA for doing this. Mark, you're going to be a Democratic lawmaker in a pro-gun state, Virginia. What do you make of all this? Well, I have three bills, actually, to have uh, some common sense gun safety that I'm going to introduce in the session. All right. And I think most Americans and most Virginians support common sense gun safety laws. You know, liberals aren't out to take away conservatives' guns. They're simply out to keep three-year-olds, for example, from having access to them, like this commercial says. All right. Before we go, let's talk about Festivus for the rest of us. It's the holiday introduced by the Seinfeld sitcom years ago, which features an airing of grievances. Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul got a lot of mileage out of it. Let's throw a few of his Festivus tweets on screen. Jack, any grievances you want to air? Grievances? <laughs> well, grievances this year. Let's see. Oh, grievances. I don't know, Morris. I don't know that well, I Well, we can talk about political correctness. Well, Donald well, course, Trump yeah. got I, that I think, going I mean, I, I agree with Donald Trump. I don't, think there's any, uh, I don't think there's any question that for Republicans, the number one reason Trump is soaring, and I think the number one problem as perceived by the Republican base is PC. And I think, you, and I think it could attract swing voters. I think the war against PC, uh, particularly if handled properly in the general election, could attract a lot of swing voters next year. Mark, any grievances you want to air? Uh, my grievance is gerrymandering. I'm sick and tired of politicians, and that would include uh, my own people, choosing their voters rather than having the voters choose politicians. Let's have elections that are based on what the people want, not what the politicians want. Here, here, Mark Levine, Democratic lawmaker, Jack Brookman, Republican strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank, Thank you, guys. you. Thanks, Morris. Thank you, Mark.